I really didn't know what the labor movement was. And now, many years later, I'm not just part of the labor movement, I'm a leader in the labor movement. And I couldn't have done that without the help of the Labor Ed Center. You know, I've learned everything from labor law to labor history to negotiating contracts. What, what we did here, when, when, when I came here to the center, it was in the process of losing union, union rates here. I mean, you had had some campaigns with um, the United Electrical Workers, UE, uh, over Morse tools getting closed. So you had, a, 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 in a sense, you had a labor movement that was beginning to, to disappear in this area because the mills were closed. Um, the whole crisis of, of, of the clothing industry, whether, and the main union here was no longer in, in terms of, of clothing, women's clothing, was the International Lady Garment Workers Union. So you had, ACTU had a number of shops here. So when I came here, that was the panorama. So we had to decide at one point in the center, what was it that we were going to do? You know, how, who were we going to deal with? Just union workers or workers in general? So we did both. I went to work in the factory in New Bedford. Um, I worked at Cliftex Corporation, which was then um, Amalgamated Clothing Workers Union. And um, I spent 10 years there uh, working as a, as a garment worker, but really organizing within the plant uh, which was a wonderful experience. Um, I'm Portuguese and 96% of the workers there were Portuguese women. And that's when I first got involved with the center because there was no other organization around that really supported grassroots organizing that we were doing. The Arnold Dubin Center has played a vital role in every important issue that labor addresses, whether it's getting information on domestic workers, whether it's studying the minimum wage or the lack of a decent minimum wage, it hasn't been raised in six years, or whether it's making the argument or educating the public about earned sick time. These are some valid initiatives we have. Our community is really, really challenged right now educationally with a 55% graduation rate um, with many who fall through the cracks. So it's also providing a space for people to become educated and get their GEDs or high school equivalencies um, and learn about labor education. The plight of the Guatemalan fish workers in the fish houses here that basically was spearheaded and sustained as a struggle uh, by the leadership that came out of the Labor Education Center, who uh, led us as groups of people into the fish houses, where we went in and confronted the bosses and spoke up for the workers. Es cuando fuliamos la escuela, no cabe ese lugar, tuvimos que ir a la BCC, donde está el, el centro ahora, está la, la, la UMAS en el downtown, y tuvimos que, ahora está lleno eso, ya no cabe, porque nosotros sí necesitamos aprender primero el inglés, segundo la cultura, cómo podemos interculturizar nosotros la, el, el idioma. Entonces, pero no solo eso, las cosas así se fueron evolucionando, ¿no? Se fueron cambiando. Llegó un punto cuando nosotros eh, fuimos explotados, discriminados, eh, acosados aquí en esta compañía de Kyler Seafood. Y también no, no sabemos dónde llevar una queja, no sabemos dónde llevar un... un eh, contar nuestros problemas, ¿no? Y lo contamos cuando estamos tomando, cuando estamos en una tienda, cuando estamos por allá afuera, que nosotros estamos eh, discriminado, excluido y todo eso. Empezamos a buscar ayuda. También conocimos otras personas y otra vez José. Y... We knew uh, very acutely about the issue of um, undocumented workers not uh without licenses, riding bikes or walking to work. And what a crisis of public transit it was, that there were no options 
um, for people that go to work very, very early and then come back, a lot of times carrying cash. So we had been working with the Community Economic Development Center around this issue, around getting um, employers to fund vans to take people to work, which we were not successful with. Um, but it, it came together with the Amalgamated Transit Union. I come from a small local of about 52 active members and it was really hard to have that loud voice that we needed and the ATU also learned from the past that the way we did things really didn't work um, as far as just us going to legislators and going to the bosses and asking them for these improvements it just didn't work. Um, but working with the Labor Ed Center and their knowledge of coalitions, it really gave us the confidence to pursue it. They helped us along the way. And now it says just 52 members. Now we have, as a result of all this, over 2,000 voices uh, asking for the same things. The role of the center has been one that I think uh, has uh, had tremendous support over the years, uh, they they do so much so much work in the community uh, around English language learning, uh, around uh, connecting people to transportation. The Labor Education Center, they're they're behind the scenes a lot, making things happen in the community. And without the Labor Education Center, I'm I'd be afraid that some of these great projects wouldn't happen. You know, there, we wouldn't have been able to research the impact of um, no transportation to the seafood processing industry. Bus Riders United wouldn't exist right now if it weren't for the Labor Education Center. I wouldn't have a job right now if it weren't for the Labor Education Center. So I, I think that this whole region would suffer if the Labor Education Center at UMass Dartmouth didn't exist. Mm -hmm.